City that never sleeps buzzing, especially if you're a Mets fan. Mets acquiring Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco from the Indians. So look now at the, at the Mets production from shortstops over the last few seasons. They were very hopeful that uh, Ahmed Rosario was, was going to be the guy, one of their top prospects. And uh, was had some difficulties had a better season in 2020. We saw Andres uh, Jimenez here. Those were the Met ranks from the shortstop position. And then look at Lindor <laughs> since the start of 2017. This guy is no joke. I mean, a switch hitter with mega power uh, can find the gaps and is just uh, brilliant defensively. And, and Sarah, let, let's dig into a little bit more about the player the Mets are getting. Uh, with Francisco Lindor behind the big smile. This guy's really good. Absolutely. I mean, we were just talking about our top 10 shortstops in baseball right now a little earlier today, and he's pretty much everyone's one or two, and you can see why. His power is really, really part of what sets him apart to me. He didn't have as much of it this year, but I think 2020 was so odd. There are so many reasons to sort of discount or give guys a little bit of grace if they weren't what they normally are. But prior to 2020, he had three straight seasons with 30 home runs. Runs. He already has the fourth most 30 homer seasons by shortstops ever. And some of those guys are guys like Alex Rodriguez who moved to third base later in their career. There's reasons who knows where he might end up, but certainly for now, he is absolutely a shortstop. He was also tied for second and outs above average among shortstops behind only Fernando Tatis Jr. in 2020. And you just get that whole package in addition to all of the intangibles. He's really on. I mean, currently with that kind of power, he might be on a sort of Hall of Fame track. I think we have to see a lot more to be sure, but certainly since his debut. And Dave, the glove is outstanding as well. It is, and, and I'm going to step out on the limb and say he is on a Hall of Fame track. <laughs> right. just, just watching this guy play on both sides of the ball, he's an absolute magician out there defensively. And the fact that you're getting 30 home runs from your leadoff hitter, right? right? I know we all love that from George Springer, but this is your shortstop providing that type of pop at the top of the lineup. But uh, for me, when you're going to win over the long course of a season, Pitching and defense is so critical and strength up the middle, which is what the Mets have been lacking for probably the last three or four years. This is a plus defender at a prime primary position uh, face of the franchise. You know, I, I'm kind of a wannabe chef. You know, so when you're trying to cook and put something really special together, you got to add the pow. <laughs> and the Mets did that. You saw those numbers from what the, the production they've been getting out of their shortstop the last three or four years compared to what this young man is going to bring. Amazing. All right. Uh, Emerald Valley over there. There you at, go. At Bam. The, uh, but the, the Mets had, had issues, so potentially they were thinking maybe they could bring in. We knew, as we heard Anthony say, they wanted to bring in a big name. So could have been Arenado at third base. It ends up being a Lindor here at the shortstop position. W what does that do for the rest of their infield now? So don't sleep on the defense. When you think of players, we almost always think of the POW on offense. And Sarah did a great job of explaining this is a shortstop with power. I wonder if he's gone for too much power and that's hurt some of the other parts of his offensive game. That being said, he's a terrific offensive player. But the Mets have really struggled fielding the ball the last few years, and they really needed to shore this up. Having said that, I do want to say I am a big fan of what I saw out of Andres Jimenez okay. last year. You know, they gave up two shortstops here, Ahmad Rosario and Jimenez. Jimenez, by September last year, had knocked Rosario off as a starter. He's a very young player. I think he's going to add some heft to his frame and become even a better offensive player. His instincts for the game are terrific okay. for such a young player. And, you know, I, I will say this. The Mets got better on defense when he played. And you saw it like, like on days where Rick Porcello pitched. Like he was the kind of guy he needed defense. And now on the days where, you know, it's not DeGrom, where maybe it's a ground ball guy like Stroman, things just got a lot better for Marcus Stroman. Right? You got the best defensive shortstop in the sport, probably, at shortstop. That is a big deal. I would not sleep on the defense. The defense has killed the Mets over the last three or four years. All right, so let's take a look here at the, at the Mets' potential defensive lineup now. And there you see Lindor, no doubt about that, uh, playing him firmly in at shortstop. But then, you know, you, you get Jack McNeil, Sarah now, uh, can move over to a second base. Obviously, no Robinson Cano. We don't know if we'll, we'll ever see Robinson Cano again in a Mets uniform and you got Dom Smith out there in left field that that is a that is a, it's center field you Brandon Nimmo and the outfield for the Mets has always been you know a, a bit of a question mark but but th that is a team you can go out there with and if these guys perform to their capabilities that that, that is a winning uh, club right there. 
Certainly, and I think that, you know, another sort of side effect of this is I think it really cements that McNeil absolutely will be the second baseman, and that's considered to be his best defensive position, so that's really good. I think that if Jimenez was still on the roster, there might be some moving with him at second and third and short and kind of trying to mix him into those different positions, which could lead to McNeil playing anywhere else. But him playing second base is really good for the Mets. So that's really strong up the middle now with Lindor and McNeil. And I would actually even say that, you know, the strongest defensive alignment for them is Dom Smith at first base. But obviously that's more dependent on whether there's a designated hitter and what happens with Pete Alonso. But the absolute best defensive alignment getting into potential other acquisitions would be having Springer in center and moving Nimmo over and moving Dom Smith to first. As I look at that lineup, maybe we can pull that back up one more time just to kind of for a visual here. But as you take a look at this, what I do when I look at a team is here's the question. Can I win a world championship, a world series with that guy at that position? And the one spot that jumps out at me on this chart right here is that left field spot that Sarah had mentioned. So Nimmo to left, and then you have that center field, and you, you kind of you can't not think of placing George Springer in that center field position to be able to just say, "Okay, we're good. Let's go. Let's well, start." So, so, but what are you going to do with Dom Smith? Play well, first base. I, I'm, I'm believing that there's going to be a DH. Okay. So and then all of a sudden, that, that cures the Mets' issue with Dom Smith and Alonzo. Because okay. you want both of those guys in your yep. lineup. I think Alonzo's going to have a bounce back. So, so what if – I'm going to give – that's what puts us <laughs> a little bit further. So what if there isn't – as of now, let's, let's – there is no DH. Then so I'm trading. You, so I'm you're, looking to trade, yeah. So you're looking to move down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. One of the most important acquisitions the Mets can make this offseason is convincing MLB and the Players Association <laughs> to have a DH for real because their team is much better. And when you look at look there, there are still big defensive problems, especially if this is your team. Nimmo is a below average center fielder. Smith is below average in left. Um, uh, third base, that's going to be below average with J.D. Davis. McNeil is okay at second. So there's still areas to address and to... Dave's point, suddenly you put Springer, if you acquire Springer mm. in the DH job, you've done a lot of improvement, including, again, if you put that up there, think about if you bring a weak righty pitcher against the Mets, the left-handed might, which was very strong last year, you just added the switch handing Lindor to Conforto, McNeil, Smith, you know, that, those, are, those are big left-handed hitters. You needed right-handed. Lindor, switch hitter. Yep. Springer would take you even for Springer. Still, I, I understand what a splurge it is. You've already made a trade for this guy. But Springer finishes off their positional group. Not completely, because again, I'm not sure that, to your point, if you're a championship team, J.D. Davis is a full-time third baseman. I'm not sure about that. But Springer, to set up your defense right and have a real center fielder and yet another right-handed bat to go with all the lefties, it really, you know, and, and I think that's what this day is about a little bit. It's about Lindor, but it feels a little bit like telling the Met fans it's begun because things are within their grasp now that where you don't feel like, well, they did Lindor. Their offseason is over. Nope. They're going to keep pushing. You think Springer's a possibility? I mean, as long as we're playing this fantasy for Mets fans, <laughs> let's take it one more step. I mean, that's what we've been talking about. I did a roundtable for MLB.com a couple weeks ago about is Bauer or Springer better and it's interest for them. And it's interesting because I think Springer is a better fit maybe in a lot of ways, but they do need more pitching help. But I do think that acquiring Carrasco changes that slightly, where now you can justify if you're spending money on one of those players, spending it on Springer and finding other ways to shore up the rotation now that you have a guy who's a solid two slash three already there and making the defense better, as you alluded to before. Marcus Stroman just got better. Like, just sitting on his couch today, he got better <laughs> because Francisco Lindor is in that infield. So I think that their pitching is looking up, and I think Springer would make more sense.